after Katrina with two joints and didn't show up for his trial because he came back to New Orleans. He was charged with interstate flight to avoid prosecution. Automatically, before the trial, lost his social security. Because if you're poor and you're charged with a felony, you lose your social security. But if you're rich and you're convicted of a felony, you can keep your money. It's the way it goes. Next up is Mr. White. Mr. White. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. White. I'm a high school math teacher. Hold your applause. Yeah! Oh, okay, thank you. I'll take it anyway. Um, I teach pre-calculus and AP calculus, and uh, my plan this year is to have my students write some spoken word mathematical poetry. And so that I may lead by example, I wrote my first poem about the most beautiful, the most sexy of all the mathematical curves, and I'm talking about the sinusoidal curve picture here. Yeah! Oh, we got some sinusoidal fans here. All right, all right. Check it out. Holy shit! Yeah, I got visuals. Sinusoidal curve. You got some nerves swinging that thing all up and down the x-axis. <laughs> now let me ask this. Have you ever strutted your stuff on the catwalk? Yeah, on the catwalk? Up and down, down and up. Make up your mind. I'm trying to find which way you're going, because I ain't know the rules. But I bet you be bending them. Your mood swings like a pendulum to simple harmonic motion like the waves of the ocean can be described by your very equation. Speaking of which, y equals a times sine, open parentheses, b, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses, close parentheses, plus the k? That equation's got some size, man. You give most men the highs, man. But I'm a wise man, and I open my eyes and see you for what you really are, which is powerful and beautiful like a star. It's a sinusoidal curve. I've been checking out your form, and here's what I observe. Parameter A gets ample dues for providing your amplitude, causing mouse and soaring valleys to plunge in colossal vertical stretch, or collapsing the entirety of your landscape in cataclysm and vertical shrink. Parameter B Apples brothers constantly because it stretches and shrinks horizontally in a manner contrary to what intuition might imply. But at least we see it has the decency to calculate your frequency when it's at two values divided by two pi. Parameters H and K. <laughs> We've seen this combination in previous transformation conversation in relation to the causation of relocation in the form of horizontal and vertical translation. So is that adequate confirmation of my mathematical dedication? I'm so curved. I'm building up my nerve. I want to slither and slide up and down your slippery slopes and suddenly grope the negative crest with the positive second derivatives and the positive crest with the negative second derivatives. It'd be so confusing, but I ain't one for losing, so I'd just be infusing my passion of using this numerical cruise. And at the end of my ride, I want to lay back and ride back and forth like a precious pearl lolling between increasing and decreasing intervals in your being before surreptitiously settling in the small of your back. Nestled amongst majestic mounds of mathematical marble. Sinusoidal curve, you dip that and swerve. I want to feel your gravity as you switch on cavity at every single point of inflection and then change direction across another x intersection. My initial objection given way to affection does not feel such connection to your mathematical perfection. Ooh, I just got an erection. <laughs> So curved. I got what you deserve. The rest of these fools, they don't get your appeal, but every time you get close to me, I cop a feel. I know those they implants, your domain is all real. So can I get into your range? Hold it back, what the deal? Thank you. Yeah, that poem, that poem obviously is for the ladies. You do have to be so sexy. I thought that was for me. And you. <laughs> For all the math lovers in the house this evening, 
Uh, I got one more short poem for you here. Um, and, and let me just say about that last one, um, I am going to clean that up before I use it in my classroom because I don't want to be that teacher that you read about in the paper uh, sometime later. Yeah, hey, okay, you know, <laughs> All right, one more short poem. I wrote this one a few years ago. I got to say, I love most of my students most of the time, but I wrote this poem during a period when too many of my students too often were not doing what I knew they were capable of doing. So this poem is entitled Sloths, which stands for Students Lamentably Offering Trivial Hope for Success. <laughs> <clears throat> Alas, lackluster leeches and lumps, lost in the lull, languishing through intellectual layovers, listlessly lapsing into limp-minded legions of red-bottom losers. <laughs> Lounging through lessons and lamenting the landfills of making livelihood, loath to lift the limb lest you lacerate your lukewarm intellectual lifelines. Look through the lenses of your lowbrow lives like lit littering lazy landscapes of lofty lineages. You lynch your legacies with laundry lists of lethargic letdowns. Lavishing a luxurious license to leisurely loaf, leaky like a levee. Liquefied by lethal liquor and vocal laxatives, lawlessly landing like glass meets leftovers in lousy latrines of life's labyrinth. No, lit me of lameness. Life lobs us languid, lackadaisical lemons. At least let's make lemon aid. <laughs> lemon aid, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my name is Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. White. I don't appreciate the terrible things you said about sloths. Which, after all, is the deadly sin that prevents you from committing the other deadly sin. <laughs>